Today using Apple Motion, we're gonna create this highlighter effect inspired by Johnny Harris and Vox. Also, if you're a patron, you can download this effect right now to use in your own videos. First things first, go ahead and open up Apple Motion. If you don't get the project browser, you can push Command, Option, and N. Go ahead and select the Final Cut title. Then in the upper right, I highly recommend that you set the presets to be whatever you typically work with. So I usually work at 4K and 60 frames per second, but I highly recommend that if you shoot maybe 1080p at 24 frames per second, that you set these settings to that. It's going to make the stop motion effects work a lot better in Final Cut Pro. You can leave your duration at whatever you like and push open. Going over to the left side, we'll delete the title background and type text here layers. From there, come on down to the rectangle and click on this down arrow to get the line. Go ahead and click anywhere you like, holding shift and dragging, that way you can create this line here. Jumping over to the inspector, we can change this shape style. Selecting that, we can go down to traditional, and if you scroll down a bit, you're gonna find a ton of really great brush strokes. One that I happen to really like is the Sable 03 buildup. So I'm gonna select that, and now you can see that our line actually looks like a hand-drawn brush stroke. You'll also notice that you have the capability of changing the last point offset here at the bottom. So we can click and drag that to have this draw on. So to get that capability over in Final Cut, we can click on this down arrow and select Publish. Also, we can change our brush color to whatever we like. So I'm gonna change it over to a nice orange color. And if we wanted to change this in Final Cut, we could of course publish that as well. And one last thing we might want to publish is the actual width in case you have a broader line to work with. So go ahead and publish that as well. Now, as it is, we could publish this over to Final Cut Pro and use the transform tools to line it up wherever we need it. But if you wanna take your learning of Apple Motion just a step further, stick with me and I'll show you how to create some powerful on-screen controls so you can make this line as long as you would like in Final Cut Pro. So the first thing we're gonna to wanna to do is create a new group. And I'm just gonna rename this to be targets. After that, I'm gonna push Command I and import this little target I created. Now this image can be literally anything you like. It doesn't have to be a target. It's just a lot easier to comprehend when you have a visual target to look at. I'm gonna go ahead and push import and I'm going to just drag this target over to the left hand side. From there, I'm going to push Command D to duplicate it and drag it over to the right hand side. After that, I'm gonna rename this secondary target to be target two. We need to make it so these targets actually drag around the line. So to achieve that, find our line layer, go on up to behaviors, go down to shape and select track points. Now this is a really powerful method shown to me by Ripple Training, massive shout out to them. Now that we have the track points added, we need to drag in our first target into the source. What this is doing is it's telling Apple Motion to track wherever this target goes. However, currently the settings are set to mimic the transform and we want to actually attach it to. If I were to drag around this target, you'll see how the entire line is moving, but we only want one of these sides to move. So with the track point selected, go ahead and disable track two. So now only the left hand point is going to be tracked with the first target. Now we need to push Command D to duplicate that track points, drag in target two, then we can disable track one and enable track two. So now each of these individual targets is going to be moving around our line for us. However, we still have an issue. Currently, we can't move these targets around in Final Cut Pro because they don't have any controls. So that is where these on-screen controls come into play. Let's go ahead and create one more group and we'll just call this the on-screen control group. I'll just call it OSC. Jump inside of our library, go to our generators and locate the color solid where I will drag that into OSC. Then I can go ahead and disable the visibility on that. Going into our filters, we can go to distortion and select black hole. Now you might be wondering why we're adding a distortion control when we're not even going to see it. That is because this is the only way to get an on-screen control over into Final Cut Pro. Motion allows us to, if we go to the inspector, to publish the on-screen control. However, this on-screen control is currently controlling nothing but a visual effect happening in an invisible layer. So we need to link up the controls of this point to the position of our targets. So to do that, I'm gonna rename this to OSC1 and I'm actually going to duplicate that and call that OSC2. Then I'm going to drag OSC1 over to the left-hand side where that first target is and OSC2 over to the right-hand side to where that target is. 
Then from there, we'll go ahead and expand our targets, find the first target, go to the properties and find the position settings. Click on this down arrow and you'll see X, Y, and Z. Go ahead and click on this down arrow next to the X value, add a parameter behavior and select link. Then we can drag in our color solid from there. Now, right now it is linking the position of our color solid instead of the actual on-screen control. So to change that, we need to go to our compatible parameters and rather than go through properties, we need to go down to the filters where that black hole filter was applied and find on-screen control one, center and X. So now the X center of the black hole is driving the position of our target. However, you'll notice that it's pushed way off to the right hand side. If we take a look at our on-screen control and go ahead and push on this down arrow, you'll see here under the Y value, it's currently offset by 0.5. And actually both of these values would be 0.5 if they were perfectly in the center. So we need to offset that 0.5. Jumping into the link, we'll find the X offset and set that to negative 0.5. So now the position of that is going to be exactly where it should be. From there, we can push Command D to duplicate that and we can change the values, compatible parameters, filters, on-screen control one over to Y. Then we can go to our target parameters, properties, transform, position, and Y. Then we'll set our offset to negative 0.5 and now you'll see that as we move this on-screen control, everything is moving as it should. We could even disable the visibility of the target and this on-screen control will not be rendered in Final Cut Pro, but it will be visible. All we need to do from there is I'll go ahead and rename these so we get a good idea of what they're doing. We'll select both of our parameter behaviors, Command C to copy it, go to target two and Command V to paste it. Now everything is linked up so they're all in one group over here. We just need to quickly change link X, compatible parameters, filters, on-screen control two, center and Y. Then we need to do the same for the second parameter. We'll go to filters, on-screen control two and X. Then we can go ahead and offset both of these, negative 0.5 and negative 0.5. So now if we take a look at both of our on-screen controls, we can move these around. I can go to target one and two and move them as needed. So I'll go ahead and get them in a pretty straight line here. Okay, so one last thing we could do is actually make it so this has a very nice stop motion animation to it whenever the line is being drawn on. We'll go ahead and select the group that contains the line. We'll go up to filters, locate under time the strobe effect. Now, whatever we set the strobe rate to is whatever the frame rate will be. So I'm gonna set this to 12 frames per second. I happen to like how that looks. Let's go ahead and go up into our project settings. Under project, we can find the last point offset. I'm gonna set this to zero. Then we can move forward however long we like and drag that up to a full 100%. And now if we push play, you'll see that it's got a really nice stop motion effect to it, which can be really, really powerful. So let's go ahead, reset that last point offset so that we can actually apply those effects over in Final Cut Pro. I'm gonna push Command S to save it or to publish it. We'll call it highlight effect. We'll jump into whatever category we like. I'll throw it into tutorials and push publish. Then let's go on over into Final Cut Pro. We will locate the category that we want and find our highlight effect, drag this on top and you'll see that we have this beautiful line here. So I'm gonna go ahead and just drag this over the 1 billion subscribers line. We could drag the width way up. And from there, we could go into our video settings, drop the opacity down a bit. We could even adjust the blend mode to be something like overlay or maybe pin light and then drag that up. Go into our title inspector. We could drag our last point offset down to zero, click to add a keyframe and then move forward a bit and set that up to a full 100%. So now we have this nice animation and you'll see that it has that stop motion effect that we added in motion. And what's super powerful is we can move these on-screen controls to wherever we want. If we wanted a diagonal version, or if we wanted it stretched way out across up here, it's totally up to you. If this video was helpful, consider pressing that like button. Also, you might really be interested in this video where I show you how to create some nice Johnny Harris map animations. With that being said, thank you so much for watching and I cannot wait to see you in the next one.